Are you tired of only getting hit and miss results on your etches of your Damascus? Well, that is a thing of the past. This video is an overview of how to etch laminated steel and Damascus in Baker Forge and Tools' new Gator Piss Etchant. The goal of this video is to provide makers out there with the tools and knowledge they need to get a good, clean, crisp etch every time. Here at Baker Forge, we have come up with a product that is super easy to use. It's pre-mixed. It doesn't require any fiddling or tweaking with. You can use it right out of the bottle and it gives you perfect results every single time. Gator Piss is designed to save you time and money in the workshop. In this video, we're going to take you step by step on how to etch a blade from start to finish in Gator Piss and show you just the kind of quality results you can achieve with this etching. So you need a plastic container. It's got to be plastic, otherwise the, uh, if you use metal or something like that, this will erode it. Um, you got to have your Gator Piss. You got to have uh, some sort of neutralizing agent. Oftentimes people use Windex. Here we have a tub with water and baking soda dissolved in it. Need some shop cloth just to make sure you can clean up uh, the knife, make sure it's dry and everything. Um, we use Brake Clean to degrease all of our uh, knives. It's uh, just a fantastic way to clean them. Uh, doesn't leave any oily residue like you sometimes find with other cleaners. You're going to need some sort of uh, WD-40 or some sort of sprayable oil. Uh, this will displace the water on the blade or any of the neutralizing agent. Eye protection and gloves. Keep yourself safe. Acid, clearly don't want to get it on your hands or anything. 2500 grit sandpaper. I use this religiously. It doesn't matter whether or not you finished your blade at 600 grit or you took it up to 2500 grit prior. Um, sunshine cloth. This is just to clean up afterwards. Really brings out that luster. And then of course your prep steel. All right, we've got two different steels here today. We've got a copper laminated steel and we've got a mosaic Damascus. Here we have copper laminated double Damascus steel from Baker Forge and Tool. I've taken it up to 400 grit on a belt and then I restarted when I hand sanded at 200 grit and went all the way up to 600 grit. After you've done the 600 grit hand sanding, you've got really nice streamlined lines. You're going to want to take it to the buffing wheel and use a fine rouge. I typically use a purple rouge and it'll give you just a really nice luster before you start to etch. Here we have a mosaic Damascus with a really tight, fine pattern. You're going to want to take a tight, fine pattern like that up to a higher grit. I, this is 2500 grit. And then you're going to want to buff it with a really fine rouge to make sure you get all those micro scratches out of it. Once you've taken your blades to the final finish and you've gotten the luster, or achieved the luster that you're looking for, you're going to go ahead and take some brake cleaner. It can be any sort of generic brake cleaner. And you're going to degrease those knives. So we've gone ahead and fully prepped the steel and we're, we've degreased it with brake clean and then rinsed it with warm water and we're going to go straight into the acid. Now when we go into the acid, we're going to leave it for about a minute and if we see any streaky lines or grease marks, we're going to pull it out and brush it with a toothbrush and or clean it again and then go back in for the full cycle of 20 minutes. All right, so we've had the knife in here for 20 minutes, a full etch cycle. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and check it out and make sure it's all etching evenly and put it in the, the neutralization chamber, the uh, baking soda with water. It looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and neutralize it. And then we're going to take it and spray it down with some WD-40 and let those oxides set up. I always uh, 
suggest leaving it for at least six hours when you're gonna go ahead and set, uh, let the oxide set um, before you touch it, do anything else with it. All right, so we went ahead and we etched this and we did a one cycle at 20 minutes and just a singular cycle. And I'm really happy with the depth that came out on it. It's got a pretty good chatoyance. It's got an excellent contrast. So we're gonna go ahead and call that one good right there. Didn't have to buff it, didn't have to hand sand it or anything. Pulled it out of the acid, neutralized it, and uh, here are the results. So this is the double Damascus with the copper shim. It was finished a little bit differently. It was hand rubbed up to 600 grit and then buffed with a fine rouge. I used purple. Um, we're gonna go ahead and finish it a little bit differently. We're gonna etch it once and then we're gonna pull it out after 20 minutes for a full cycle and we're gonna go ahead and buff it again with that fine rouge. After we do that, we'll go ahead and clean it and we'll etch it for the second time and do another full 20 minutes and then pull it out and kind of see where we're at. Alrighty, so the blade has been in for about two minutes and I noticed some streakiness coming out. And so what you do is you pull it out, you grab a toothbrush, and you're just gonna scrub the whole blade. Really try and get that acid worked into the, into the grooves of the steel. Make sure that you're getting in all those little grinds. Do it on both sides. And sometimes when you do this, you'll see the 15 and 20 darken a tiny bit. It's a uh, superficial, and in the second dip, we'll we'll address that. All right, that should be good. And then we'll go ahead and put it back in, and let it finish the entire cycle of 20 minutes. All right, so we went ahead and did a full cycle, a 20 minute etch. We're gonna pull it out and neutralize it. We did get a tiny bit of doling of that 15 and 20. So we're gonna go over to the sink and we're gonna take some 2,500 grit sandpaper to it. And then we're gonna go ahead and buff and repeat the process of etching it. All right, so we went ahead and we took 2,500 grit sandpaper and just rubbed it down real quick. And then we buffed it with that fine rouge. So it's really important that you get the steel really clean after taking it to the buffing wheel. Uh, that rouge will stick to it and it'll totally distort the etch. So you gotta take the brake clean to it, scrub it really good, and then rinse with warm water and go back into the acid for another full cycle of 20 minutes. All right, so we just finished up our second full 20 minute etch cycle. We're gonna go ahead and pull this out, neutralize it, and then if we like how it looks and we like the depth, we'll go ahead and spray it down with some WD-40 and let it rest and set those oxides up for about six hours. liking it, so I'm gonna go ahead and neutralize it. All right, so we've let these knives set for a little while, let those oxides set up. We're gonna give them a quick wipe down with a uh, microfiber cloth, and then we'll go ahead and spiff them up real quick with a sunshine cloth 
and uh, then they're they're done, good to go. So as you can see, you can see that we're peeling some oxides off of it. Just the excess. Oxides. Just the excess. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we've wiped off all the excess oxides and all of the uh, residual oils, and we're gonna go ahead and just buff it up real quick. The really cool thing about Gator Piss is that it leaves this really deep, dark, matte black finish on the 1084. Um, it's, it kind of cuts out the, the coffee portion. You don't really need to do a coffee etch. Uh, once you do this etch, you'll kind of lock in these oxides and you'll just get that really nice deep dark black and that the, the matte part of it makes the uh, shiny 15 and 20 really pop and gives it a little more depth, I think. Um, and it's not glossy like you'd see with a coffee etch. Yeah, the idea being that Gator Piss is a one-stop be-all shop. You don't have to use coffee after using the Gator Piss. It leaves those matte blacks in there beautifully. And you can go back and you can rub it up with the sunshine cloth as much as you need. Um, a lot of times with a tight pattern like this, I'll even take it to the buffing wheel a little bit later and just really bring out that shine. Um, when I do that though, I definitely don't put any rouge on it. Just do a loose wheel real quick. And, uh, but that's totally, it's up to you on what kind of luster you're looking for um, and what kind of finish you really like. But that's kind of the end result right there on that double Damascus, 100 layer cladding over 300 layer core. All right, so once again, we're gonna go ahead and just wipe off any of that residual oxides and oil. Just a couple foul swoops. And you can see that I've taken off, you know, well, some oxides on the towel but you can uh, still see all of that deep dark black is left on there. Polish it up with sunshine. This part I think is just critical. I feel like uh, it really makes the, the luster come out, really makes everything pop. Gives you that nice sheen. And you're not taking any of those blacks off. It's all sticking. You can rub it vigorously. You're not going to take any of that off, so don't worry about it. So you all can see just how easy it is to get a beautiful, stunning finish on a piece of Damascus or laminated steel with Gator Piss. It's fast. It's simple. Your days of dipping your blades in some random acid mixture and getting mixed results every time is over. No longer. No longer. No longer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a super clean match. You really just can't beat it. You're not going to touch the 15 and 20 and that's a huge upside. Have, people always have to pull their knives out and hand sand and then dip and then hand sand and then dip and it's just a lot of extra hassle. Uh, this process and this product, Gator Piss, will just eliminate a lot of that and make a, your, your knife making life easier. Oh yeah. So head on over to our website www.gatorpiss.shop and get yourself a bottle today and get etching. Yeah! <laughs>